derogation of notice. <coughs> We have two uh, proclamations honoring uh, both communications Eileen Darlene Travier and Miss Carrie McKay. Can you both come up? And I'll do one at a time. Body of Mahali Township, New Jersey, a proclamation honoring Ms. Darlene Trapier. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Whereas the Beacon of Hope stands as a beacon of light and assistance for residents of Mahali, providing essential services such as food, clothing, shelter, and life training skills to those in need. Pastor Darlene Trapier, the founder of Beacon of Hope, has dedicated her life serving others, drawing from her own experience of homelessness to support individuals and families facing similar challenges. And whereas Pastor Darlene Trapier, journey is one of resilience and faith, having become homeless at age 19 with her five-week-old son, yet rising above adversity through her unwavering belief in the power of God and her commitment to making a difference in the lives of others. Whereas Pastor Darlene's traveling vision and leadership have guided Beacon of Hope from humble beginnings and outreach ministry, providing hope and assistance to countless individuals and families in need. Whereas Pastor Darlene exemplifies the spirit and compassion and dedication of community service inspiring others to embrace her values and helping others. Therefore, in celebration of her achievements and dedication to the people of Mahali and the United States of America, the Mahali Township Council hereby proclaim and declare that it is a right and just that we honor Darlene Trapier for these achievements and she will be celebrated in honor. And furthermore, we encourage all citizens of Mahali to join us in the summer. Body of Mount Holly Township, New Jersey, a proclamation honor Miss Carrie Lynn McKay. Whereas Carrie Lynn McKay has dedicated her life to serving others with compassion and grace. And whereas during her tenure at Virtual Memorial Hospital, Carrie Lynn McKay served as a psychiatric specialist demonstrating expertise and care for her patients. And whereas despite facing challenges such as layoffs in 2009, Carrie Lynn McKay responded with determination by founding Carrie Cares, Soul Singer, a ministry dedicated to serving the community of Mount Holly Township and beyond. And whereas Carrie Cares has tirelessly worked to enhance the well-being of members of our community by providing medical equipment to those in need, developing community gardens to promote healthy eating and donations to support medical clinics in Ghana. And whereas through her ministry, Carrie Lynn McKay has empowered our community to, to providing, by providing resources and support to individuals and families facing adversity. Therefore, in celebration of her achievements and dedication to the people of Mahali and the United States of America. The Mahali Township Council does hereby proclaim and declare that it's the right and just that we honor Carrie Lynn McKay for those for these achievements, and she should be celebrated and honored. And furthermore, we encourage all citizens of Mahali to join in this celebration. Thank you. I just want to say that I'm accepting this proclamation in honor of everyone sitting in this room. Everyone from Tara, you've even contributed to the ministry during your worst time. Antique store in the back, letting a whole bunch of breast cancer survivors walk through their store on a walk. Darlene tag, tag teams with me. Joyce, you, I mean, I can sit here and name. Arlene's done a ton of stuff. Everybody in this room, we're accepting it for each other. We're all one big team. Thank you.
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. both of those individuals a round of applause. <laughs> All right, so moving on. So we have um, approval of minutes from our February 12, 2024 executive session and our February 12, 2024 council meeting. Can we have a motion? A motion to approve. Do you have a first? Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll second. Uh, Ms. Astor? Yes. Ms. Burgess? Yes. Mr. Jones? Yes. Mr. Knight? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. All right, we have an ordinance for first reading by title only. We will not be taking any questions or comments from the public on this ordinance. Ordinance 2024-4, ordinance amending chapter 265, Section 49 of the Township Governing Stop Intersections. Can we get a first? A motion to approve uh, Ordinance 2024-4 on first reading. And second? Second. You have a second. Roll call. Ms. Astor? Yes. Ms. Sorry, Ms. Burgess? Yes. Mr. Jones? Yes. Mr. Banks? Yes. Thank you. All right, Ordinance 2024-4 has passed for first reading only. All right, we have an ordinance for our second reading and a public hearing. We have an ordinance 2024-3, ordinance amending chapter 265, section 65 of the Township Code governing residential parking only. And before we make a motion, I would like to invite anyone who wants to have any comments on this particular ordinance only. Do we have anyone in, does anyone have any comments in regards to this particular? Would you explain it? What is the ordinance? What is it? What is the ordinance? What is the first ordinance? This is ordinance 2024-3. This is amending, I think it's Josh, you want to stop signs. Um, the one permit on route. Hold on. Hold on. Let's let The budget that's complained about high school students taking off parking spots to find their houses. For permanent parking. On Wisdom Street, right. um, adding residential parking signs to it. Right. So this is in, it only involves Wisdom Street. So we're expanding the no parking for students on residents. Yes. Permanent, Permanent parking only for residents, so no students should be allowed to park. Okay, for the residents all that's what they want. Yeah. Okay. And it would be nice if uh, this, we have, sir, can we have your name? Jeff address? Meyer, 203 Broad Street. Now. That's what Joe's point. Okay. Um, it might be nice because we might have questions in the second reading of 2024-4. It'd be nice if it was in here so that we can plan. If you have any questions about what that one is, it has to be approved in advance. Okay. There's, pockets, there's pockets in the back that have all of the resolutions and ordinances. Oh, it is? And yeah. everything is also available on the website. Okay, great. Thank you. Do I see any other comments in regards to this particular ordinance? Is that one for Dash 4 was for Elementary Correct. This is only the Dash 3. Morning Taylor, Taylor Ford, 117 Branch Street. Um, I, if, I, if I understood correctly, because it's hard to hear in the back, you said this ordinance is for the residents over near the high school. They didn't for Risden. Risden. Risden only. Yes. Do you know approximately how many houses that is? No. That they're going to have uh, the signs in front of? Has someone contacted the high school? Do we have anything going on? Residents complain, and this is our action towards it. They wanted permanent parking to keep people from parking over there. So, so that's an all day thing. There's going to be no differentiation between the street. You're going to have to have a permit if you live on that. I didn't hear you. You're going to have to have a permit if you live on that street to park. So you have to have a permit to park there. When is this ordinance going to go into effect then? Are you giving the high school some time frame to let these students know they can't park there anymore? 20 days, 20 days, 20 days after it's approved. So after tonight, 20 days from tonight. And the high school's been aware? The high school's been made aware, or? We can make the high school aware. We can make that, we can, we can contact them. So what, what's gonna be the, what's gonna be the, uh, 
if the student's parked there after the 20 days, I'm assuming someone's gonna contact the high school. There's gotta be a representative to let these students know who drives. It was just not my Holly kids. It was five sending districts whose yeah, children. Yeah, we understand. Okay, so, and you just now said, no one knows if they contacted high school. So. So here's the thing. So the residents on that particular street, this is what they wanted. So we'll make the proper communication to wherever we need to communicate that. And after 20 days, they have 20 days to comply. Mm -hmm. Hopefully nobody gets, you know, improperly told or ticketed or anything like that. But, so but there will be some warnings. There, there will be some warnings because understanding our police force is pretty understanding in terms of what the situation is. So we can take care of it. So uh, the, the students will, the cars will be told and counted? We don't know that. Probably, probably a warning for the first time. Warning? I'm sorry. Probably a warning for the first time. Warning for the first time, second time the car is towed. Ticket for a ticket. I'm ticket, ticket it. And then I'm assuming the third time it's going to be towed. I'm just asking. Cars going to be towed. I mean, I, 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 I'm, attending, I'm attending the high school you know, community board um, situation, so. We're trying to answer a question. We don't, we will not tow the cars. It's been said by our attorney, our township manager, and our mayor. So the ticket or they will be warned then ticketed, and then and they will be continue ticketed, ticketed, which will then result in violations on their and it's insurance not just students and everything else. That's not just <coughs> the parents will have to handle it. So, so anybody. what was asked by the residents of this township, which is what we're here to serve. I understand that. Okay. So my question again is, for students who are going to be defiant, okay, which high school students are in some aspects. That's not our problem. My, my question to you is I'm asking you, if you're not towing the vehicle, then I'm going to assume these tickets are going to add up, add up, add up. And at some particular point, the motor vehicle, not the township, is going to step in. I would assume so. I would assume so. I would assume their parents are going to step in. If this is going to take place in 20 days, when are you going to notify the, the, the high school? We can notify the high school as soon as this is approved. But it has to be approved first before we can notify anyone about the changes okay. that are going to be taking place that has been asked by us by the residents of this township. So is this on the board to be approved tonight or yes. in the future? This was second reading. Second, second reading. Second reading. So again, when are you going to... I think we already answered those questions, Mayor. I mean, it's... Uh, Ms. Ford, be honest. You asked that question. We said as soon as this gets approved, it hasn't been voted on. So we cannot give you a definite time frame of what day it's going to be notify the town or notify the school. But we will tell you if it is approved tonight, we will notify the high school about the changes so they can notify their students about the parking situation. I understand that, and I okay. have to give you the time frame. You specifically said 20 days. Uh, You're gonna give the kids 20 you'll notify, days. Uh, Thank uh, you, that's so all As long as it's approved tonight, well, yeah. it'll be notified Thank tomorrow. You. Thank you, I appreciate that. Thank you. Do we have any more questions? On this ordinance. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. PS4, 117 Branch. <clears throat> as far as this um, the school thing, has the, the residency the residents did the resident complain to the school about this? They complained to the council. Okay. So, so they complained to one person, but they didn't complain to the main individual, right? They didn't complain to the school. Who's the main individual? The school. No. No. Yeah, our school was in township. Right. Okay. And then just the parking. Hold on, let me okay. answer this. Because normally the school sits in this township, right? So what happens is we had parking problems before. We try to work with the school in this situation. They're at the point where they're hands off in terms of that. So it comes back to us to, to address the situation. This is us addressing the situation to allow the students to make sure they park in the proper Corporate areas. I know. I know it's it's an issue because this is a tight mm -hmm. in terms of open space. There's not a lot of parking, and it's residential, pretty much all around the school. And so we get the reason why I'm bringing this up is because you're gonna have more individuals that's gonna be complaining about this. Yeah. I mean, you're gonna have because I mean, 
the parking as far as for the kids, they don't have enough. They don't have space. They don't have enough space. So there's got to be, if, if, if we're going to put an ordinance like that on there, there should be a solution for the kids and where they, they need to park at. And we will look for more solutions. Here's the thing. At, at this particular time, we're more concerned about the residents here. <coughs> the students that are parking are probably not from Mount Island, more likely mm -hmm. like from the surrounding city. Mm -hmm. So obviously yeah. some, something has to give. Can't have it both ways. Okay. And you brought up a you brought up a point about the importance of the residents. I've been to these meetings so many times that individuals is it Mr. Is Ford? Is this for this order? Oh, is this oh, just, oh, this is oh, this Okay, okay. You'll okay. have I'll have, have one more time. I'll have okay, thank, thank you very much. much. Appreciate it. <clears throat> Any more comments? I'm seeing there's none. We closing comments for this ordinance 2024 3. Let's bring up for a motion. Can I get a first? Motion to approve. We have a first. A second? A second. We have a second. Roll call. Ms. Astor? Yes. Ms. Burgess? Yes. Mr. Jones? Yes. Mr. Yes. Yes. Thank you. All right, that was the test pass. All right, now we move it on to the point where matters are presented by the public. Members of the public are invited to submit comments during the public comment portion of this meeting. The council pursuant to the open public meeting act of 46 Bism Street. Um, for the ordinance 2024-4, um, I want to I appreciate you for reacting to the safety of our residents. I just wanted to know if you have any idea where the placement of the stop sign will be. Is it going to be where Monroe and Bism meet, or is it going to be on the left side where we won't lose five parking spaces? It has to be on the right hand side. Right hand side. According to the law. Okay. All right. That's all. That's all. Thank you. Hi, Michael Rothfeld, 33 Union Street. Um, I wanted to note that yesterday, Councilwoman Burgess organized a group of people to remove the tree protectors um, from the trees at Mill Dam and Ironworks Park, which should have been removed a few years ago. Um, participating were myself, Arlene and John Pfeiffer, um, Kim and Julius Burgess, and Louis Lopez. Um, and this was actually a requirement of the grant that my that former environmental committee chair Randy Rothfeld obtained for, for the township to create our riparian buffer along the creek. Um, some of the tree protectors were left because they were in the creek because of the rain Saturday. But I will also note, in light of this, um, thinking about that, that this is March's Women's History Month, and um, it appears to me that the women on this council are not treated with respect. And women are not recognized um, in this in this council. Um, the start the process started from when I ran for council, and my my opponents, three men up there, chose to attack my wife Randy, which I felt was not appropriate. Um, and then I see the disrespect given to Kim and Tara with regard they don't get notice of things that the council is sponsoring. They were not on the there was a St. Patrick's Day th um, uh, thing that was only the the men councilmen were on there. And I think that's inappropriate. I think this is International Women's History Month. You have to start doing running things like a council and not like a adolescent boys clubhouse that only boys allow. Um, and especially because they do contribute. Tara I know contributes so much in terms of notifying people what meetings are and getting out the public, which is why we have a public here, um, which is very important. And so I really think that we consider International Hit Women's Month 
We decide that we're going to treat the women on township council as full equals when we do things as a township council. Um, and I also think that given the size of this room, rather than invest in one microphone, we should invest in quite a few for Mr. Brown, each council person, and Mr. Coleman, so that everyone can hear everybody speaking. That would be a, a, a wise investment and not very expensive. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Hi, I guess I'm just lucky I'm here on the right night. I just wanted to ask a couple questions briefly about the parking. Um, I'm going to talk about Buttonwood Street up near, near the mouth. And I don't like just to present a problem where there, there aren't solutions involved. So that our street up there, Rousel Street, Langstaff, they're all very thin. And with the vehicle size is getting increasingly bigger. Like even my husband's truck is ridiculously big, probably six inches wider than most of the cars. The streets are now so narrow. I've actually seen literally on Roswell Street, Amazon and the um, garbage men knock on doors to ask people to move their vehicles because they can't get by. Um, the parking has been very difficult. We have root issues with them jutting into the street, so we have a difficulty parking up against the curb, so that makes it a little bit more narrow. We've had people moving in with commercial vehicles to bring the work vehicles home on top of their regular vehicles, so that adds up extra vehicles in the neighborhoods. We tried to put driveways in a few years ago, and that was denied, and I thought that might be a partial solution. So don't, I don't want to see these streets become one way for obvious reasons, but if there's going to be safety issues where two cars can't pass and there's no empty parking space to move over to let the car go by, I'm just asking if we can come up with some type of solution that's amicable and friendly to everybody. If we could just start putting our brains together and even if it's like um, privately meeting and see if we can come up with a solution and present it at any time. Uh, well, Roswell Street is so narrow. Like, well, they have a dumpster on that street right now because Sonny had passed away and the house was abandoned, so they need to, like, gut it. So we do understand that, but there's a few work vehicles that come home that are as big as my husband's personal truck, so it's not just their fault. It's just big. Vehicles are becoming bigger. The um, streets are not. There's, I guess, economically more people are in one household, so there'd be more vehicles in each house, potentially. Kids are getting older, getting licenses, and we're having a lot of issues parking. So just I would, like even if we were allowed to put the driveways in, you know, that we had originally put, we went through all the park processes, and for whatever reason, like eight years ago, they were denied. It might be a partial solution to this problem to get some of the cars off the street. Just something to think about. If we can all put our heads together, I would like to see something happen. All right, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Jeff, I've admired you at Three Broad Street. Um, I, I went to Penny Work. And they're trying to put in uh, paraphernalia shops on the second floor of the hot shop. And I quite, don't quite understand what the vision is for Mount Holly Council and the residents. I haven't heard one person who likes the view of the hot shop to start with and the signage growing down Main Street or the police mm -hmm. out front. But we do have a hot shop down in the old downtown. It's very nice, it looks like an old Victorian home. It's beautiful. And I understand why whether we, we change the ordinance, the sign ordinance, because the old sign ordinance said you couldn't put neon signs or lighted signs out there, but it must have gotten planning board approval. And I don't know what vision is for Mount Holly. Is it we're going to have all the pot shops and other things like that in the downtown, and that's what we're looking for to expand it? Because I haven't heard any residents liking it, but it seems like the council likes it. So that I'm not sure. And then I noticed that townships own quite a few buildings in Mount Holly. And for some reason, I think they've been now giving them away or selling them. I don't know whether they're getting any money for them or what we're doing with them. But we we bought man took Matt's hardware back. I believe we paid we forgave a two hundred fifty thousand dollar note on it, and we got the building and we owned it for years. And it's looked horrendous since they've owned it and they've never fixed it. And then Bill's Bargain was sold as soon as or given away or whatever happened. So now Bill's Bargain is going to be renovated. So if we're giving away buildings, are we giving them timetables to fix the building? Because it's clear that after 10 or 15, 20 years, I got the township the building, Bill's Bargain building for free. So we paid nothing for it and we collected hundreds of thousands of dollars in rent and we never put any money into it. 
and we allowed it to be that as soon as the building moved down, they closed it down for fire problems, no sprinklers. <coughs> so here we have a building that was in town, I didn't inspect it, and our township fire marshal and our township code enforcement official didn't go and inspect the old party until the, the last 20 years to allow it to get shut down when the new owner takes over. So my question is, what other properties does Mount Holly own? I'm under the impression that we bought the bank on Rancocas Road. If you look at the top of the steeple and stuff, it's Rod and Lee Team. We've owned that for how long? A couple of years. Are we going to keep our tradition in this council? You, a couple of you guys have been around quite a few years. I recognize you. Um, are you going to continue not to maintain your own building in the township of Mount Holly and let them rot and decay and then maybe we'll just give it away in the future? This is the problem Mount Holly's had and nobody in this council seems to care about it. So I, I, maybe they can enlighten me as to what other properties in Mount Holly Township own. And before we start putting shots on the second floor, we have vacant stores on the first floor. And Madden's Hardware's been empty for 10 years. Guys trying to open up a, a you know, paraphernalia shop on the second floor. I think that's all wrong. I think maybe we should send a message to maybe take one of the first floor stores. Why are we putting one on the second floor? So that's my question. Maybe, so I guess you guys, that guys don't respond. So I get something in writing, or can I talk to Josh or the mayor, and he can give me a list of what properties are owned by Mount Holly, and what we're doing about sure. it. And maybe the contracts that we've done with these other ones, if there's a timetable to fix them. Does yeah, Mount sure. Holly own? We can, we can always address that. Okay, and then I went up there to get the paperwork. She said all the resolutions are back there. I didn't see any. So where would I get that from? <laughs> they're on the website, or you can request them from. You said they're in the back. Uh, they, I had printed copies. I heard my, I must my have printed them. So, uh, well, maybe we can print more so we're they're also on the website. <coughs> you can email me and I'll be glad to email them to you back. Okay, thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Morning, Taylor Ford, 117 Grand Street. Uh, first, I'd like to go ahead and thank Jim. We had a great um, St. Patty's Day area. Um, I was supposed to be selling tickets and wound up selling beer, but it was a learning experience. We got on Jen. It was fun, though. Um, great, great outcome, rain and all. Um, also, want to go ahead and uh, thank the firehouse for the shared service agreement so that we can be here in this building instead of being over there in that dump that we were having our meeting in when we were told that we were renovating the little bank over there. So I don't know how we wound up here. We're supposed to be over at that bank. Um, what I do want to ask is, uh, first, do we have a recreation director hired? I saw that on the uh, resolutions here. And if we have, when are applications for the summer camp going out? Um, I had talked to Sean Kennedy some years ago when Sean first started here, when I threatened to call the health department. Um, the same year, I think the township went to not working on Fridays. Okay, the bathrooms are atrocious. I go every year, I spend my own money, I clean up those bathrooms because my two younger children have to sit their behinds on those toilets and they're females. I put my money into that. I don't ask the township for anything. Every year, I just wait for Sean. I let Sean know what I'm doing. And then I also provide treats every year for the summer camp, thanks to Robin's Nest. So I just want to know, I asked Sean last year, when are the bathrooms getting painted? Okay, we're talking about asbestos, we're talking about lead paint. When are the bathrooms getting painted? It's been many years, okay? Josh Brown Meats was working there. Lou Brown's granddaughter's working there. In a disgusting bathroom, serving food from a disgusting bathroom. It's been like five, six years, I think, and nothing's been done. So, if you can at least get the bathrooms painted, or I'm gonna paint them myself, and then I'm gonna call the media. Next thing I'd like to talk about is, um, last meeting, Mr. Mayor, I asked you about the stop signs, the uh, flashing on High Street. Josh directed you, he spoke to you. You did not redirect and tell me what was said. You mentioned to someone in the audience that um, if there was something that you needed to know, you would tell us. If I'm asking as a citizen, why didn't they put one flashing on the High Street? Josh explained to you why they did. You did not redirect. And so where does that leave me hanging? How am I supposed to know if they're gonna put another sign that says, you're going now to 25? Because if not, then that's a, a speed trap that Mount Holly is setting up. 
because people are going to people are going to be 30 coming in they have a stop to 30 and when it changes to 25 now they're going over the speed limit that's a ticket I'd like to also know about uh, if there's any statues for community cats. We have a lot of community cats in the area. So, community cats like the TNR, the feral cats that are running around town. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, Betty Jean Tesler, 418 Mines Cap Avenue, Mount Holly, New Jersey. I'm in regard to the basketball stand and its location. Back on July the 10th township meeting, I brought up to you all that about the basketball stand, the broken basketball stand. And at that time, I requested an ordinance to be made because I notified you that there was no ordinance. After that meeting, Mr. Banks asked me to file a report with the police department so that you could get the bank to remove that old one and have my neighbors move the other one down. That's what you told me you were gonna do. July the 26th, the woman retaliated. You all know about the incident where she committed senior abuse, elder abuse, disrupted the flow of traffic, interfered with traffic, as well as endangering the safety of herself and three children. I was not here for the August meeting. Came to the September meeting. I notified you that I got Progressive, the company that manages 26 Hillside, to remove the broken basketball stand. You never went to my neighbor and asked them to please move it down 20 feet, the portable one. When I tried to approach you about it after the September meeting, you ran out and took off like a bat out of nowhere. October 4th meeting, I came to you again after the meeting. I asked you about what was going to be done with the basketball stand. Mr. Banks, you told me to talk to Mr. Brown. And Mr. Brown defiantly stood there and said to my face, no, the township's not going to move it, and no, the township is not going to make an ordinance. During this whole process, no township council member ever said whether you will or not put a, make an agenda to put an ordinance out for portable basketball stands in the street or on the curb. Now I'm requesting again that the portable basketball stand be moved down. I have no problem with kids playing basketball. I have a problem with the location. And that's been the issue since July the 10th. And I find it irreprehensible that he sat here last month in the meeting and stated that there's no ordinance, there's nothing he can do. He made the statement August, um, October 4th. No, he was not gonna move it and no, you are not gonna make an ordinance. Now, my understanding is the council members are supposed to put it on the agenda whether or not you're gonna make an ordinance. And at this point, I have no doubt if you do make an ordinance, you're gonna sit there and turn it against me anyway because all this is is retaliation, harassment, and bullying because I stood up in the, in the year of 2019 and 2020 and we all know what went down for two years with a certain individual. I am tired of the harassment. I'm tired of the bullying. You need to start doing your job or step down. Right, before, before, before I get to the last person, Ms. Kessler, we spoke to you multiple times. You sent the police out multiple times to address your issue. So no, you didn't. Don't sit here and try to spread lies. No, you did. Not. We, we One got meeting with Detective Bailey. We got it documented. One meeting, and nothing's been done. And we got it documented. So don't and I have all mine documented too. Thank you. So to let you know. So you go right ahead. We address, we address you multiple times. No, you didn't. Amber Copervast, 100 Madison Avenue. Um, I just have a quick question since we now have somebody full time in the UED position. If in the future, if agendas will be posted on the town website and then um, minutes afterwards. I know it recently happened, so I, I can see the minutes not being up yet. But the last thing. That's two years, they're all there. I was, I, that's incredibly rude. It's rude. I mean, I, I go on the website all the time. And I, I, I have the I website up on my phone right now, so. The agenda? 
which, 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 which agenda are you referring to? I said the UED. Yeah. Oh, okay. I, 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 heard heard I just heard agenda. So then so maybe you should I hear what I said. To you. No, because you didn't say, because there's multiple people that didn't hear you say. That doesn't Where mean I didn't say it. I absolutely did. Okay, then I don't apologize. Yeah, we heard it back here. We heard it back here. I'm sure. This is outrageous. Yes, it is. So it's not worth it if you were about to be true. And yes, there is an issue with parking on Buttonwood Street. I actually, uh, if I want to go one way, I actually have to go around the block. But I accept that because we have new neighbors. The other thing is the 30 to the 25. I live right there just before it changes. I have lived here for a long time, so I know that it changes from what, 40 to 30 to 25. And I know what lane to be in. And you'd be surprised at the amount of people who all of a sudden go, oh my God, and they pass me on the right. And then they speed their little hearts out all the way down and they're annoyed because I obey the law, because I live there. I know. The other thing is about women's history month. Now I'm older than everybody here. I'm even older than Lou Brown, okay? When I bought my house in Mount Holly 40 some years ago, women did not, single women did not buy their own house. I jumped through hoops. I did this, I did that to buy my own house. I didn't know I was so hot I thought. I wanted my home, home for my children. So, no, I don't expect any gratitude. I had to get my own credit card. I had to jump through hoops for that. Rich, I am ashamed that you have two women on your council. And there's a photo on a hit movie system like that nobody there lives in my house. If it was your relative or a woman that you knew that went through this to get on council to make a difference, you would want her honored in National Women's History Month. Foreign countries honor their women better than this city, this town. Italy honored Tara, and she wasn't even a citizen. She was there as a student, and they honored her because she was a woman. Shame on you. And I would like you to apologize to them for neglecting to mention this Women's History Month, and you have two women and you don't even acknowledge them. And we do know that the other councilmen admitted that they don't think they don't like them and they don't get along with them. Oh yes, Lou Brown did, and if you want to see the video, we'll be happy to show you. But I'm, I'm embarrassed and ashamed for this town that they did not honor two women. And I'm, I'm like I said, I'm old. I'm a great grandmother four times over. I went through a lot. And that wasn't that long ago that women had to fight for rights, take my word for it, fight for child support, fight for it to buy a house. Okay. Thank you. I'd like to use the remainder of my time because I was pretty busy interrupted to actually ask my question. Can you speak so, one more time? Sure, it's Amber Kopervas with a K, 100 Madison Avenue. And my question is, since we now have someone in a full-time UEZ position, will the UEZ meeting agendas and minutes be posted regularly as the council meetings are? And as I was saying, I understand that the meeting recently happened, so I'm not even complaining that the minutes aren't up yet. I know it's been like a business day, um, but I did note that the agenda was not posted ahead of time. Um, and I would just like to know if that's something that I can look out for for future meetings. Uh, we'll talk to you about that. Right Fantastic. Thank you so much. Thank you for Mayor Ford, 117 Brand Street. Can you guys hear me? Yeah. Okay. Can you see the white? Okay. All right. Thank you. All right. No problem. 
Um, one of the one of the discrepancies that I see right now is I noticed that first of all with the parking, the parking 